Welcome friends uh, to the session of marketing research and analysis. Uh, in the current in the last session we were uh, continuing with hypothesis uh, uh, testing. Uh, previous to that we had uh, um, we had discussed about uh, hypothesis development and then we went into hypothesis testing. So, in which uh, we spoke about basically uh, the uh, hypothesis testing uh, uh, through uh, the Z and T test basically the Z and T test right. So, and we said they are more or less similar in nature right. The only thing being that the T is used when the sample size is uh, very less and the population and the sample uh, and the standard deviation is unknown, the population uh, standard deviation unknown, right. Uh, but um, the basic uh, interpretation is this is uh, this is nothing but a Z but a smaller uh, version you can understand or a Z is a larger T version, right. That is the way you can understand for simple terms. So, uh, and now uh, we explain that one sample uh, mean. So, basically what is happening now you are uh, you are trying to test the hypothesis on basis of two factors either the means or the proportions right. So, we, uh, we discussed about a problem about the score of students GPA uh, of education measures and uh, the normal students uh, in which we uh, uh, we used the uh, hypothesis testing. So, one sample uh, is one sample t test is something where you have only one sample and you are comparing this one sample against the population uh, mean right. So, so uh, on the other hand there are two other things like the independent or two sample in the uh, independent or let us say two sample test two sample do not get confused if you see these words ever two sample t test right. So, uh, in an independent sample t test or two sample test what we are happening is we are trying there are two groups of uh, samples we have pulled in two sample groups and now we are trying to say ki whether these two samples are they uh, uh, coming from the same population or are they different from each other right. So, uh, the assumption uh, if you have understood by now the null hypothesis that we would make in such situations is that the, the population groups from this, this these two come are actually same right. So, mu 1 is equal to mu 2 right is a case of a null hypothesis in such situations. Uh, remember while doing a hypothesis uh, there are three things in statistics we have uh, it can be something like uh, there can be a case of greater than there can be a case of equal to there can be a case of lesser than right. The equal to case is a case you can remember it forever that equal to case is a case which is used for the null hypothesis right. Then comes sometimes it could be equal to greater than or equal to uh, lesser than. So, it could be anything right. So, uh, but equal to is for sure in the null hypothesis ok never get into that confusion. So, now the question is mu 1 is equal to mu 2 suppose let us take a very brief example. So, uh, let us take uh, now what is happening now we will compare now let us uh, see a problem. I have brought a problem in which I will explain through this the data is given to you uh, something like this. It says a manpower development uh, company is determining is uh, trying to see ki whether the hourly wage of workers in two different cities in two different cities are they same or different what is saying now there are two cities basically city 1 city 1 city 2. So, there are workers and the hourly wage is given in uh, basically dollars this is this question you can also find from the book also right uh, from the Levin and Rubin book I have taken. So, uh, the hourly earnings hourly earnings is given to you right which says this is in dollars 8.95 ok and uh, city 2 is let us say city 2 uh, give it a name for example, let us say this is uh, uh, it is given here apex and this is Eden ok 2 cities and this is dollar 9.1 ok. What other data do you require? The, the mean has been given to you. Now, what other data if you think? So, uh, you cannot test until unless you know ki how much the values are deviating from the mean which is the standard deviation ok. Now, let us take the standard deviation. So, the standard deviation is in the first case is 0.4 and in the second case it is 0.6 ok. 
the n the sample size taken for bo from both the cities was 200 and 175. A difference in sample size you should not be confused or you should not worry because at the end of the day when you are talking about mean or averages the sample size if it is different also it does not matter. Okay. So, now the question is what is he asking? The company wants to test at 5 percent level of significance right at 0 0.05 level of significance okay significance whether the mean earnings of the two cities are different or they are not different okay so in such a condition what will be my null hypothesis first let us understand that so my null hypothesis is i am writing my null hypothesis here so my null hypothesis is that there is no difference that means the so the hourly wages of both the cities are actually same and whatever difference has come that is only by chance it is not a statistical difference right so no significant difference so mu 1 is equal to mu 2 that is what i am saying so there is no difference now what is my alternate hypothesis this is my so what is my alternate hypothesis now there is a difference right very simple so there is a difference so that means what if there is a difference can i know whether the difference is uh, who is bigger eden is bigger uh, whether this city has a larger one or this city has a larger or vice versa i cannot say so in such situations we will say mu1 is not equal to mu2 so what do you understand from here that means is it a one directional or two directional test obviously it is a two directional test because it could be lesser one could be lesser than the other and we do not know which one. Okay. Now, in such conditions how does it uh, how do you go about it let us say uh, the other values are also given to you. So, uh, what we will do is since we are saying at a 0 0.05 level of significance if I draw it in a graph uh, or a sorry the, uh, let me draw it here the normal distribution. So, how does it look now it is saying it is what it is saying now this is my let us say 0 this is my z at 95 percent level. So, minus 1.96 this is z here plus 1.96. Now, my question is the z value which I am going to calculate first of all you have to understand is it a z or uh, this time t I I will use this is z z or z whatever not a t why because the sample size is much bigger than 30. Okay. So, it is more than even 100. So, in that case we are using a two tailed. So, obviously the 0 0.025 is remaining here and 0 0.025 of the 5 percent is remaining here. Now, I will calculate our z and see ki where our z falls. Okay. Now, to do that in the earlier case you were using the formula z is equal to x minus mu upon sigma x okay. and here when we were measuring the sigma we were taking the sample standard deviation right we are using but here the how would you calculate the sigma x right how would you calculate in this case sigma x because there are not there is not only one x here there are two x right so sigma x1 x2 okay sigma x1 and x2 now how will it look like in this case now if you uh, go by this it looks something like this root over of right sigma 1 square by n 1 right plus sigma 2 square by n 2. Now, you can understand why I am doing it the earlier formula was sigma x is equal to sigma by root over of n right. So, in order to remove the root over what I did was I, I of the denominator I multiplied squared it. So, it became sigma 1 square by n 1 plus sigma 2 square by n 2 right. So, the root over of this is uh, uh, now what we are going to take. So, let us uh, take this calculate this and how much it is coming now this is coming to be sigma x 1 x 2 is equal to 0 0.053 dollars. Okay. So, this uh, estimated standard error is equal to 0 0.053 dollars okay now we will use this one into the formula now what is the formula for z, uh, z now we will now it was earlier it was only x but now we have 2x so x1 minus x2 in minus 
mu 1 minus mu 2 right divided by sigma x I hope it is clear by now. So, the sigma x already uh, sigma x 1 x 2. So, with this has been calculated already from here. Now, if I take x 1 minus x 2, now what is my x 1 minus x 2? Now, x 1 is let us say 8.95 minus x 2 was 9.1 I think yes 9.1 right minus mu 1 minus mu 2. Now, what is this mu 1 minus mu 2? We do not know. Do we know or not is a question, but if you go back to this situation where you see we are saying the we are always testing the null hypothesis in the last session also I had said we always test the null hypothesis. Okay. So, here mu 1 is equal to mu 2 our null hypothesis says. So, that means mu 1 minus mu 2 is equal to how much mu 1 minus mu if mu 1 is equal to mu 2. So, mu 1 minus mu 2 is equal to 0 right. So, 0 divided by sigma x 1 x 2 which was 0 0.0 5 3. Now, calculating this the value is coming to be minus 2.83 right. So, where does minus 2.83 lie? Where does it fall? Minus 2.83 will fall obviously not to the right. So, we will fall to the left and that too after the critical zone uh, critical region. So, somewhere let us say here. Okay. Now, from here what is your analysis? What would you interpret? Now, obviously, you would interpret that the null hypothesis since it is much away from the critical zone region. So, the null hypothesis is to be rejected. So, what is the null hypothesis? Now, there is no difference between the two cities, the earnings of the two cities and the whatever the difference was, it is was only due to a chance, but that is completely wrong. So, that is that means now we will accept the alternate hypothesis which says that mu 1 is not equal to mu 2 and there is a significant difference between the earnings of the two cities. right? So, this is basically what we do in a independent sample t test. S similarly, you have a dependent sample t test the difference only being that there is only one sample group there is only one sample group, but they have been taken twice. Now, what does it mean? I will just explain the meaning other things remaining the same. So, <coughs> in a dependent sample t test what we do is basically it is a before after case before after. Now, let us say many a times uh, uh, the sample group is only one many a times we want to see the effect of a medicine or a training program or something. So, we take the people's let us say blood pressure right uh, before and then the medicine or treatment you say the treatment is given treatment treatment if you remember experimental designs we have discussed about it treatment is given so what is the effect now right so when you do this right the met, uh, method or treatment whatever is you say, and uh, then after that again you calculate the bp right so this difference this is only one sample but there are two values for us right for the same uh, sample in this is called a two sample t test right or a dependent uh, sorry dependent sample or pad sample t test ok. But now what if I have not even started my slides. So, let me uh, go to that. How do you uh, in a case of sample proportions what will you do? Suppose you have sample proportions how will you analyze your sample proportions? When your variable it says is at a nominal or ordinal level the one sample z test for proportions should be used ok. Remember, proportion is nothing but we said is a p by q form, right? So, if the data are in percentage format, first convert, convert the data to a proportion format. Let me keep it here, okay? To a proportion format. Now, what it is saying? This method is the same. There is nothing, absolutely no difference. If you do, right? Only thing is that instead of the means, you will have the proportions. So, p minus let us say uh, uh, you can say the uh, the pop sample and versus the uh, uh, population right the population. So, p uh, group minus p population. So, p sample minus p population that is all we will require right. So, uh, other things remaining the standard error the standard error will change to sigma x will change to sigma p. So, standard error of the proportion ok. Now, let us see this. So, what it is saying formula for proportions is p s is the sample proportion right. P u is the population proportion which was like p uh, earlier we were saying x is the sample mean and mu was the population mean here we are saying this other things is same p s minus p u this is what I did right divided by root over of 
what you are doing? You are doing uh, uh, sigma uh, uh, x by uh, sigma uh, sigma uh, x is equal to uh, sigma by root over of n, right? So here we are saying p u into here only thing this is changes. This is becomes p into q. That means the uh, probability of success multiplied by the probability of failure divided by the n. Okay. Take a problem. In a provincial election, 55 percent of voters rejected lotteries. Okay. Random sample of 150 people showed that 49 percent of the voters rejected the lotteries. Is the difference significant? The question comes. Now, what will you do? Use the formula for proportions and the steps, same steps, right? That means what you have to write the null hypothesis, uh, decide the significance level, decide the tail of the test, and all these remain the same. Okay. So, the, it is a random sample, the sample is large, right? Sample is large. Is it large? Yes, 150. Okay. So, what it is saying? P u is equal to 0.55, right? That means the if you go back, what it is saying? 55 percent voters uh, voters rejected lotteries. So, the proportion of vo voters who rejected the lotteries is equal to 0.55. Okay. H1 says no. P u u is not equal to 0.55 because if you see only 49 percent voters had uh, rejected. So, we will say ki no, it is not 55 percent, but it is less than that, okay, 49 percent. Okay. The sample is large and we use this. Okay. Now, let us uh, do this. So, 0.49 was our sample uh, from the proportion and this was the population, right? And when we uh, did it, right? So, we got a value of minus 1.48 right now one, minus 1.48 now you have to check compare against the 95 percent confidence level is 1.96 which i had earlier said so through this value can you now re re reject the null hypothesis no no you cannot reject the null hypothesis so you have failed to reject there is no significant difference between now that means what there is no significant difference between the rural population and the rest of the province you cannot claim that there is a difference between the two population uh, parameter uh, two, two, two populations the rural uh, what is saying the rural population and the others in the province right so this is the case of a uh, this is a case where proportion is to be used the same methodology you can adopt for even two samples and uh, dependent samples okay you have to maybe you have to go through some other examples okay now this is the example you can later on do it this is for a weight reduction this is a dependent uh, samples okay now this is i'll come to now a case what happens when i have let's say i have now earlier i used to have maximum one sample maximum one sample or uh, i had only one sample let's say x1 or i had maximum two samples okay sample groups but the question is suppose let us say a person uh, uh, wants to test something in which there are more than two levels or more than two groups right so in that case what will i do suppose i have x1 x2 i was doing a independent sample t test if uh, but suppose there is an x3 coming in right so if the x3 comes in into this what how will i uh, do the analysis right what will i do as uh, the analysis to do this to do this there are several possibilities i can maybe do number of uh, you know uh, independent sample t test like x1 x2 right or x1 x3 uh, then x2 x3 i can do this right but the question is this is not justified you should not be doing it why you should not be doing it if you do this then every time you are taking an alpha of 0.5 right each time so the error will get inflated the error will get inflated so three times if you do it is going to be inflated and it is very cumbersome it is confusing if you have three but suppose you would have eight groups so how many would you make combinations right so you have to avoid this situation right to avoid this situation you may have to uh, you know uh, think of uh, some other way of doing it so what is the other way the other way is we adopt a test which is called the f test f test or we also call this it as it is very popularly known as the analysis of variance the analysis of 
variance. So, why it is called analysis of variance? Because simple, it is measuring the variance of the uh, of the two uh, things in, uh, in in account. That is the groups, all the group within the groups. That means if there are several groups, let's say there are uh, group, let's say one, x1, x2, x3, right? And uh, each had got several samples, let's say, right? So what is the difference between the, the groups that is one that is which you say between the groups and what is the kind of uh, the uh, variance within the group. So, analysis of variance helps you to uh, basically uh, 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 measure the, uh, the test hypothesis by taking into account two ways basically variations or variance one is between the uh, groups and the other is the within the groups right. So, this is if you uh, simply if you want, want to understand in other terms also what happens is if you want to go through a, a dependent independent variable the ANOVA is one where the dependent variable is basically in a continuous or metric scale. A dependent variable is in a continuous metric scale. The independent variables are non-metric or categorical in nature, non-metric or categorical in nature. Okay. This is what you have to remember, right? if this is one dependent variable then it is a case where we are saying it is a ANOVA. Right? If you get into multiple then we will have a new technique which is which will uh, which is called MANOVA multiple analysis of variance. Okay? So, now let us uh, get into first the ANOVA, we will we'll, uh, think talk about it the later things, but it may be uh, we will see. Okay? So, now what is happening? In the case of analysis of variance as I said, so f ratio the uh, is calculated. right? Now, this f ratio is nothing but it says mean sum of square between divided by mean sum of square within. Now, what do I mean by this between the groups and this is within the groups. That means, the researcher is and now looking at this is basically like a you know you are getting slowly in, this is purely an experimental study right. ANOVA is used in mostly all kinds of uh, studies in the uh, experimental research basically where people are studying on chem, uh, in, in the chemical lab or on biology or anything for that right. So, basic uh, you are using this uh, technique it is a most one of the most uh, robust and a very very powerful technique uh, where uh, the yes the assumptions of uh, the normal distribution are very important for ANOVA that has to be checked always right. So, what is this uh, mean sum of square between and mean sum of square within right. So, it is something which is again if I write it like this it will look like the total sum of square between right divided by the total sum of square within right degree of, of freedom this is by the degree of freedom right. Now, degree of freedom this is between degree of freedom within. Now, what is the mean sum of square that means if you go by this now the mean sum of square which is the finally we need for to calculate the f ratio is that either you start from this that means the total sum of square between divided by the degree of freedom between the groups divided by overall total sum of square within the groups divided by the degree of freedom within the groups which is nothing but is equal to mean sum of square between the groups divided by mean sum of square. So, this is this is the you know this is the same thing okay? this is the same thing right. So, this ratio basically tells us ki how much uh, what is the f ratio. Now, once you have the f ratio the f value right other things remains the same other things remain the same. Okay? So, let us uh, just have a look at it what is saying? It is a test of means for two or more samples the null hypothesis typically is that all means are equal. So, if I am having three groups let us say, so what will I say mu x 1 is equal to mu x 2 right is equal to mu x 3 right. So, when I am having three groups I am saying the means of all these three groups in my null is same there is no difference right. But as a researcher do I want that they should be same? No, obviously not. 
So, what will I, uh, what will I, what do I, uh, this is my null hypothesis, what is my then alternate hypothesis? Now, at least, at least there is one difference between the three groups that means either mu x 1 is not equal to mu 2 or is not equal to mu 3 or mu 2 is not equal to mu 3. So, whatever it was it is right. So, if there is at least one uh, difference between the uh, one thing that is not similar is not equal to is a case then we would say that the null hypothesis has been rejected and the alternate hypothesis is to be now accepted. Okay. But let us see, let us see what, uh, how would you go ahead, okay. let us see some uh, theory behind it. The analysis of variance must have a dependent variable that is metric as I said and, and the independent variable must be non-metric. Suppose the independent variable is uh, let us say uh, having also some metric let us say which we sometimes called covariates, then it is a new technique called ANCOVA. ANCOVA. Now, what is ANCOVA? ANCOVA is a technique where we are saying it is called analysis of covariance where the independent variables are metric as well as non-metric, right. So, it is one new method, it is a method which gives you, uh, which makes you, uh, you know, uh, provides you an opportunity to take the covariates which are basically metric in scale right so uh, uh, this is basically to uh, you know to address the blocking effect basically that you do in an experimental group uh, when you block a group and check uh, and treat a group and then see the difference that is where it is basically mostly used okay there must also be one or more independent variables that are called category that are all categorical and these are called the factors so let me tell you you, if you go through any book or something, you will see one factor ANOVA or one way ANOVA we say one way is nothing but one factor. That means, we have only one factor one uh, one uh, let us say uh, one factor that is let us say I want to see let us let me rub off this one. I just want to say that I have I have uh, uh, I want to see ki whether the sales of uh, uh, you know goods in a retail store depends on the size of the store or depends on the type of the city. Now, what I have done? Now, I have taken three types of city, uh, three types of places, let us say, not cities, rural, urban uh, and uh, uh, let us say semi-urban and urban, okay, three. Now, the question is when I am measuring this three, rural, semi-urban, urban, they are all basically cities only, places only, right. So, towns or places whatever. So, places. So, I am actually measuring only one, one uh, factor is there. I have one factor which has got three levels, right. So, in this case that is what it is saying the categorical independent variables are also called factors, but in a factorial design if you remember uh, we had said you know, if you go back to the last few sessions in a factorial design there might not be one factor there might be two factors, there might be three factors, there might be more than that, right. So, what is that called? Now, when you have two factors, we say it is a two way ANOVA. When you have more than three factors, then you say three way ANOVA. When you have five factors, five way ANOVA. So, n factors, n way ANOVA, right. So, the analysis of variance basically this is nothing but a this is a simple factorial design that you are using in an experimental study, okay. So, uh, what is saying? The an inferential statistical procedure used to test the null hypothesis that the means of two or more populations are equal to each other, they are equal. So, it is uh, why it is named after the gentleman, uh, the, he was a scientist, uh, he mostly he had done his works on the agricultural fields, uh, R. A. Fisher who uh, had developed this uh, uh, you know concept of analysis of variance the f statistic f test and uh, uh, you know so all this credit goes to this gentleman okay so t test versus anova i'll just wind uh, wind up my uh, session here so it compares two groups test the null hypothesis two population uh, two population has the same average or same mean but in anova compares more than two groups and tests the null hypothesis the two populations among several numbers of populations has the same average. That means, uh, if you if I can uh, re, uh, redesign, you can say when I have more than two groups or three groups, my null hypothesis is still remaining the same or the, all the means are the same. That means, they are equal. So, in that case we say it is uh, there is no difference between the means of the uh, 
uh, uh, the groups or the sample uh, samples and they are all same that is my null hypothesis in the case of ANOVA. So, in the next session what I will do is we will I will explain you how to calculate uh, a ANOVA right. Uh, take a case of ANOVA and uh, we will see ki how to measure ANOVA basically we will look at uh, a problem where we will have that we will calculate that uh, sum of square and uh, find out the F ratio and uh, finally check uh, a hypothesis right. So, uh, today in the session let me recap we have uh, explained about uh, independent sample t tests, dependent sample t tests and we spoke about how what should you do in case of a proportion and then we next moved on to the next level, we moved on to the next level in a group of uh, you know in a case of multiple groups how would you what would you do which is an F test. So, uh, in any marketing research I will take a, tell a problem in the next class through you know in a marketing research problem where marketers companies are using this for to understand whether one particular particular group uh, let us say uh, you know uh, brand of cars or say you know category of car is better than the rest. For example, let us say Maruti has got several uh, cars right. Now, it can say ki whether the sales or the popularity of the cars are all same or it is there is a difference between the popularity of Swift versus let us say Zen versus uh, Alto right it can do that. So, in such conditions marketers use it profusely to a very high level and uh, they test hypothesis to prove that there is actually a difference between the groups ok. Well, this is all for the today's session thank you so much.